Welcome, Daryl Strawberry. Good to have you. You know, Daryl, I'm having a deja vu moment. I feel like we've done this before, right? We have. We yeah. have. We're pretty good at it, though. I think so. I think you're pretty good at it. This is our third time we've had a conversation, and every conversation was a little different than the other. You have such an amazing life. But, um, you know, looking back on, on uh, first meeting you, I met you at the White House, and uh, we went to a special dinner. That was the second time I think I met you at the White House, but it was for evangelical leaders. And, and there was a moment where the president opened the microphone up and said anybody who wanted to could come up and speak. And a lot of people got up there and, you know, gave a lot of praise and a lot of compliments to the president. Darrell walked up there. He was so bold because Darrell knew uh, Donald Trump before he was the president because Darrell was on Celebrity Apprentice. And, uh, <laughs> So, but I mean, I love the way you spoke, though, as a, as a believer and a follower of Jesus. And, and But here's the other thing I really noticed about him, his boldness there. But then before and after, all kinds of folks, of course, recognize him, want a picture with him, want an autograph, want to say something. He just took time for everybody. You know, a real great representative of Christ. So welcome, Daryl. It's great to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Greg. Yeah, it's, it's good to be with you guys. Good to be over here. And uh, yes, we've done this, and it's it's pretty cool to be able to have an amazing pastor like this. You know, it makes it a lot easier for you to have a conversation, and it's not that very difficult. But, um, you know, being with the president and everything and just really trying to uh, allow him to know that um, man has not called you, God has called you. Yeah. You know, and just like all of us, man doesn't have the say. You know, if we listen to television and what they have to say about us and we believe that hype, then we're wrong. Because had I believed the hype of what they said about me, then I wouldn't be sitting here right t today and I yeah. wouldn't be a follower of Jesus Christ um, had I listened to him. And, and I was trying to get him to understand that persecution is real. You're going to be persecuted b because of what the society doesn't like about you. And that's not, that should never be your worries. And I was telling the, President Trump that, you know, because God found me in a pit and put me in a poor pit. I'm not even qualified to do that. So God can put you anywhere he wants to put you when he wants to put you. So we as people need to understand that. And if we don't really have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we don't know him. Yeah. You know, and, and most of the news, they don't know Christ. They're not, they're not talking about faith. You know, they're talking about worldly things. They're not talking about kingdom things. They don't have a kingdom mind. I, I mean, I have a totally kingdom mindset. I wasn't always like this, but I've had a transformation with God. You know, over nine years ago, God called me to preach. 15, 16 years ago, I was shooting dope, smoking crack, and God put a woman in my life, and that's my wife today, and she was pulling me out of dope houses. And God's going to always use people to help people. And we need to understand that man does not have the last say. Man does not qualify you. God qualifies you. Right. And that's what the president needs to know. God, God has qualified him. You know, Daryl, you've lived the American dream. I mean, many young men would just love to do what you've been able to do, play with all these teams like the Giants, the Mets, the Dodgers, the Yankees. And uh, they think maybe you lived like this storybook life, but it wasn't a storybook life. Your father was an abusive man. In fact, there was a, a moment in your life when, when it could have turned out horribly. Tell us about that time. Yeah, I mean, everybody really got a chance to see me live a very successful life because I played Major League Baseball and put a uniform on. They thought, well, you make a lot of money. You should be happy. Money don't make you happy. If you're broken on the inside, broken is real. It doesn't matter how much money you make, how much fame you have. If you're broken on the inside, and I was broken before I ever put the uniform on. See, my pain led me to my greatness, but my greatness would eventually lead me to my destructive behavior. Because if you're never well on the inside, it's going to lead you to all those habits. Can I just stop you there? That's yeah. such a great statement. Say that statement again. My pain led me to my greatness. Right. But my greatness led me to my destructive behavior. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's pain that usually is lead us to uh, being who we uh, want to become and everything because of, of, of hurting, yeah. of rejection of what, what's happened. And my father was an alcoholic and, you know, he used to beat me and lay me across the bed, make me take off my shirt and, and beat me with an extension cord. And my brother, and he came home for the last time, pulled out a shotgun when I was 14 years old. And my brothers, and, and we went into action. We came this close to killing my father. He Were said, you 6'5 then? I was. Yeah, I was 6'5. You know, we're about to do some damage, me and my brother. And he pulled out a shotgun and said he was going to kill us all. So most people never knew that I was already broken before I put a uniform on. Yeah. 
and brokenness is real. And we live in a society today, you know, brokenness, lawless, lawlessness brings about brokenness. Loose living, alcohol, parents, rejection, all this stuff brings about a broken generation. And um, that's, you know, what it was for me, and that's what it still is today, why kids are broken, you know, because of what they go through and never uh, allow themselves. They don't... Uh, we don't allow them to get well on the inside. You know, we want to look at people from the outside. Yeah, I've been privileged my whole life. I lived behind community gates. I had millions of dollars. I had homes, cars, but I had nothing. I was just a baseball player when I put that uniform on, hitting home runs, because I was in pain. I didn't become a man until I met Jesus. When I met Jesus, I became a man. <laughs> So in your journey, oh, get a tight shot of Daryl's ring. Can you get a camera up close to his ring? You can check this ring out. Look at that ring. Wait, get it in there. We're, they're trying. They're looking at me for some unknown reason. There it is. Look at that ring. That's a nice ring. It says New York Yankees on it. Could I just have that ring? Yeah. How about if I just preach in it? I'll just see. Now let me make this one point right now. You know, let me think about that. Uh, yeah, that's beautiful. There you go. You're, you're the man who should wear it. You earned it. So here you had this incredible success, as you've already said, but then you, your life began to spiral in the, out of control. You got into drinking. You got into drugs and all kinds of crazy stuff. And, and then there was a big moment in your life where you found out you had colon cancer. So where, where were you at spiritually when you got that news? Well, I wasn't really never anywhere spiritually because, you know, I got, I got saved in 91, but I didn't get discipled. And discipleship is so important. I think so many Christians miss out on discipleship. And discipleship is reading the Bible and understanding God's word and God's commandments and his will. And if you don't do that, you know, you're going to be the same person. And, you know, that's why the Bible talks about my people perish because of lack of knowledge. You know, I was perishing because of lack of knowledge and no understanding. I had earthly knowledge, but I didn't have kingdom knowledge. And you don't really get kingdom knowledge till you pick up the word because the word empowers you and it teaches you how to live and it teaches you who you are. And so I was struggling, you know, with all that. I was struggling with the success. I was struggling with the sickness. Um, I was a complete lost person completely. I was, I was a heathen. I was a liar. I was a womanizer. Uh, I was a cheater, I was an alcoholic, I was a drug addict, but I was a sinner saved by grace. Wow. You know, God's grace is sufficient. You know, no matter who you are, he still has grace for you. No matter how far you go down, he still has grace for you, and he still has a perfect plan for you. And so many of us find ourselves, you know, with so many struggles like I did, and they ultimately give up. And one thing I just want to encourage the church and people who are here today is don't quit. Don't yeah. give up. You know, God is not finished. You know, everybody else may be finished with you, but God is never, ever finished with you. Right. I'm a prime example. You know? yeah. I'm, 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 a, I'm a prime example that God is never finished with you. He meets you right where you're at, and he has the perfect plan for your life if we don't quit. I mean, so many of us quit, and so many of us deny Jesus. I mean, you know, we just think, He's Jesus as a power. Jesus is a holy man. He's a righteous man. He's a man with no sin. So he comes into your life, and when he comes into your life for real, and when you commit to him for real, he empowers you. You know, he brings you to a wholeness and righteousness. He liberates you. He redeems you because he's been redeemed. He's been resurrected. He is the redeemer. I'm not an overcomer because of me. I'm an overcomer because of the blood of the lamb. When we understand that blood from the cross, that blood Jesus had on that cross for you and for me, that blood is clean. So you need to know that. See, I always tell people, what is, what is Jesus here for? Jesus, Jesus is here to rescue you from your sinful ways. He's here to redeem you with his blood. And he's here to restore you with his grace. Wow. See, when you understand that, then you understand who you are. I think a lot of times, a lot of times, a lot of us never give ourselves a chance, Pastor, to enter into a real relationship with Christ. And we just think, oh, it's just Jesus that they talk about in the book, you know, but He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lord. You know, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. By his stripes, we get to be healed. You get to live an abundant life, a life that you don't even know about because of the grace that he gives to you every day. That's right. You know, Daryl, um, there might be somebody listening right now who's uh, struggling with drugs or struggling with alcohol, and they've tried to break free from it, and they've fallen back. You had those same struggles, like you said a few moments ago, for 15 years. 
Uh, so what word of encouragement would you give to a person struggling with whatever addiction it is uh, in their life? Whatever, whatever you're struggling with, just allow other people to help you. Yeah. That's the most important thing. For yeah. First, don't try to do it yourself. You know, God used my wife a little bit over 16 years ago, you know, pulling me out of um, dope houses, you know, and I was shooting dope, smoking crack, and she had one year of recovery, and I was lost, and I, I told her, why don't you just leave me here, you and God, and let me die, and she was like, you're just not that lucky. <laughs> So God is going to always do what he's always done. God is always going to use people to help people. And when we can understand that and we can humble ourselves, especially those that are struggling and those that have hang-ups, habits of hurt, if we can humble ourselves and we can get rid of our ego, a three-letter word, easing God out. If we can get rid of our ego, then we're able to get the help that we need. Because that's what he's going to always do, you know. He's not asking you to be perfect. Stop trying to be perfect. You're not perfect. Jesus is the only perfect one. You know, he's asking you just to follow me, follow the, obey the commandments, follow me, and trust, and trust the process. And, and some of us got to be in that place where we have to learn to trust God. You know, we don't trust God enough. And we'll trust everything else. We'll trust what the television is saying. We'll trust this. We'll trust everything else, you know. And, and Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 come to my mind. You know, it talks about it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. He will direct the paths if you trust and believe in him. If you believe what the word says and allow people to help you. We got to get, get away from stop pushing people away. And we got to learn how to love people. The most, most important gift that I've learned through this whole process with God is God loved me in my brokenness. Yeah. And that's what we need to do. We need to learn to love people right in their brokenness. Don't mean you have to tolerate. Tracy didn't tolerate my bro She didn't tolerate me, but she loved me in the midst of my mess. And she loved me back to life. God used her to lead me back to the cross, used her back to leading me back, coming to the altar and repenting to God and asking God to forgive me. And then he restored my life. Amen. So, Daryl, your father mistreated you so horribly. And uh, one would understand if you were to say, I don't want to ever talk to that man again. But uh, after your baseball career had concluded and you were out now serving the Lord and speaking, your father ended up in the hospital and the Lord directed you to go see him. Tell us about what happened. Yeah, that's, that's good, Pastor, because it's very powerful to understand you know, about forgiveness. And I think so many of us, we hold everybody hostage about what has happened to us. And I did that for so many years with my father. You know, I, I kept him out of my life, my career, and I hated him and didn't want him to be a part of nothing that I was achieving and, and the Lord saved me. And then, you know, six years into that, six years later, uh, somewhere down the line, I'm going to do a men's conference. I'm out of speaking and the Lord says, go see your father in the hospital on a Friday night. And I was going to speak at a men's conference that morning. I was going to talk about God's love. And he says, <laughs> he was like, go see your father and repent to him. I said, really? <laughs> I mean, I, we hadn't had no relationship or nothing for a very long time. He says, yes, I want you to go down there and I want you to repent to him. But I want you to talk about anything he did to you. He says, how dare you not forgive him and I forgave you. And I just sat there and I was just on the bed. I, no, I'm just needing to finish this. And, and I called my wife and I said, I didn't tell you this part before. I called my wife and I said, please pray for me. I said, God is all over me right now. And he's not playing. He's talking about go see your father and repent to him. <laughs> and she said a prayer, and then I, then I woke up, and I did the mass conference, and I realized that I needed to go down, and I went down there, and I asked him to forgive me. He said, don't talk about anything he did. He beat me, rejected me. He said, don't talk about nothing. And I said, will you please forgive me? I, I'm wrong for keeping you out of my He said, yes. And I just lost it. I laid in his lap, cried so hard. I just lost it. I just completely lost it. I just laid there, and I was just crying like a baby. And and, and the Lord said, raise up. And, and I raised up. I said, you know, the Lord has changed my life. And I said, the Lord is speaking to me, and he wants to change her. Would you like to accept the Lord as your Savior? And he said, yes. And there it was. I was leading the man that beat me to the Lord. And God says, well, I want you to remember one thing. I want you to remember one thing clear. It's never about you. See, because I used to always think it was about me. See, he said that forgiveness was not for your father, that, getting, that forgiveness was for me. Because I had held him hostage so long and I was broken and empty on the inside so long. Because anytime you don't let anybody free, the brokenness of who you are stays. And as soon as I, as soon as I released him, I got free. 
there was something that came off of me, and there, were, there was God telling me in the midst of that, don't you ever forget, it is never about you. Once God has saved you, it's about you being redeemed to go out there and help somebody else to come to know that his great love for them is real. Regardless of what you've been through, it doesn't matter what you've been through. So, Daryl, um, tell us what you're doing now. Well, I'm doing a lot now, you know. I'm, I'm an evangelist. I travel. I traveled 236 times last year preaching, which I wasn't qualified. And, you know, nine years ago, God called me away and said, you're going to go preach. I said, no, I'm not. He goes, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> you know, let me say one thing, Daryl. You're very qualified, and I'll tell you why. Because you have a story to tell. And God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. You know, and you, you know, God is not looking for ability. He's looking for availability. I'm not qualified either. You know, high school graduate, barely. That's it. L made a lot of bad decisions in the early part of my life. But, you know, I have something to say. And you have something to say. And you've lived it. And you've seen God do it for you. So as far as I'm concerned, you're very qualified to go and preach the gospel. Well, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. You're so kind. And, uh, and I really do appreciate it. I really appreciate being with you because you're a great man of God. And, and I really follow those that, that set the example of who Jesus is. You know, and, and that, that's what's important. And, you know, God has allowed me to um, live an abundant life. You know, he has allowed me to preach the gospel and he's allowed me, he's raised me up, you know, from the pit to the pulpit and, and qualified me to, to do as well. Only because I said yes. That's right. When I got to a place, I said yes. Do you know what yes is? Three letter word. Y-E-S. You enjoy salvation. Amen. Like you it. get to enjoy salvation, and salvation is incredible. I think so many of us pastors don't understand the greatness of salvation. Yeah. Salvation is everything, everything I've always wanted. Like, not baseballs, not home runs, not millions of dollars. I wanted to know Jesus. I wanted a relationship with Jesus Christ, and that's what we all should want. It's a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He's so good. He's so great. He's better than anything that you will ever taste, better than your wife, better than your husband, better than your kids kids, better than money, better than fame. He is everything when you taste and see and have a relationship with him. When you make that commitment to him, you will not want anything else. Wow. Amazing. Well, next year is the 30th anniversary of the Harvest Crusades at Angel Stadium, and I've asked Daryl to come so I can interview him there again, so we'll be seeing him again. Let's thank Daryl Strawberry. Thank you, Pastor.